It's not continuous because there's a gap here where you need to lift your pen when drawing the function. Any location where a function is not continuous is known as a discontinuity. Okay, last one. Is this function continuous? Let's try to see if this is continuous. We can start drawing it, and without picking up our pen, we can easily make it from the beginning to the end. So it seems to be continuous, but let's look carefully. At this value of x here, if we draw a vertical line, it crosses the graph in two places, here and here. So this value of x corresponds to two values of y, y1 and y2. If one input creates two different outputs, it's not even a function. Okay, entonces no es ni siquiera una función. Yeah, that was a trick question. This curve isn't even a function since it fails the vertical line test over here. So a function is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pen. Otherwise, the function is discontinuous. This is a good working definition for continuity. We'll come up with a more formal definition a little later. Let's also mention smoothness here. The continuous function is said to be smooth if it doesn't have any pointy corners. A smooth function should look smooth. Here's a function you saw earlier in this tutorial. It's not a smooth function. Can you identify at which x coordinate this function isn't smooth? Right. It was at coordinate D, because at this x coordinate, the function has a pointy corner. The rest of this function, however, is smooth. Vamos al 1.5, describiendo funciones. Sí. Describing functions. Here we'll describe functions a few different ways. Functions can be positive or negative, and increasing or decreasing. We'll also mention what it means for a function to be monotonic. Okay, so for this graph, we've shown the positive regions in green and the negative regions in red. The graph is positive where its y coordinate is positive, or above the x axis, and a function is negative where its y coordinate is negative or below the x axis. So for this function here, we have one two, three positive regions. How many negative regions are there for this graph? Okay, 
parece que es una función. Eh, ¿Cuántas regiones negativas hay? Escríbanlo. Por ahí salió un chico de los 60. Estaba haciendo símbolos de la década de los 60. Así es, hermano. Este. ¿Ya contestaron? ¿Ya? Eh, es que me hizo así. Amor y paz. Amor y paz. Así, así, así pedíamos el fin de la guerra de Vietnam en la guerra de Vietnam. Este. ¿Eh? Ah. ¿No, ¿No eres de mi generación? Bueno, amor y paz, hermano. Este. Sí, hay dos regiones. ¿Todos están de acuerdo en que hay dos regiones? ¿Alguien da más regiones? Dos regiones a la una, dos regiones a la dos, dos regiones a la tres. Bendito al joven por dos regiones. Dos regiones. Correcto. Fíjense. Voy a hacer algo. Ahora, ¿cuántas regiones negativas hay? Ah, pues, a ver si pueden pasar en voz alta, digo, porque modifique la pregunta. Ya está la respuesta. ¿Y ahora? Okay. Son las regiones donde la función, es decir, los valores de Y son negativos. Y es positiva en las regiones donde los valores de Y son positivos. O sea, están por arriba del eje de las X. Entonces tenemos ese tipo de At this point, you should try making your own function by dragging your finger across this graph. So the next question here is if you have a function that's positive in one location and negative in another location, does the function, if it's continuous, have to be zero at some place between them? Here it's true, but is it true in general? 